Hello everybody, Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are here checking out Magic of Voxel 0.9.9.2. Obviously this was just released, uh, it was released on a Friday to be honest, I kind of missed those Friday releases because hey, it's Friday. But this program is definitely worth covering, in fact I already have covered it, I'm covering it again because it is just that good. And the 0.9.9.2 release brings some pretty sweet stuff to the mix. Now if you've never heard of Magic of Voxel, well what you need to do right now is pause this video, Go download Magical Voxel, play around with it for the next 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hours, then come back and watch the end of this video, and then thank me for introducing it to you, because it is a cool application. It is one of those great free game development applications. I would say it's definitely top 10. Hey, you know what? I should make that. Top 10 free game dev applications. I'm going to. I don't normally do top 10s, but that one definitely deserves to exist. And Magical Voxel definitely deserves to be on it. So, what is so magical about Magic of Voxel? Well, it is a voxel painting application. I'm not going to get into a whole lot about how to use it. I've already done that. As you can see, there's this video here where I introduce how to use Magic of Voxel. And I'll link that instead. So I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of it. We're more going to focus on what is new in this particular release. But first, I'm going to give you a quick explanation of why this application is magic. And this is really easily illustrated from this example. Welcome to Magic of Voxel. This is the application running. And what, per se, is a voxel? Well, you know what a pixel is, right? It's a 2D dot on the screen used to make, you know, pixel art, uh, typical graphics, texture maps. Those are all made out of pixels. And it's just a 2D grid of colors. Well, a voxel is just a 3D grid of, textile, of colors. So basically, see this? Well, see how it's got depth? That is a voxel. So instead of just being a one-dimensional pixel, it is a two-dimensional pixel or three-dimensional pixel. Basically, it is an X, Y, and Z pixel, so it has depth. It's kind of like working with virtual Legos. In fact, let's show you a different example here. Let's bring up this knight character like this. That is a typical voxel character. Now, if the word Minecraft is coming to mind, yes, Minecraft is very much a voxel environment. It goes back way before Minecraft. There was a company called Nova Logic that was absolutely obsessed with voxels back in the day, and they made voxel flight simulators and shooters. There were a lot of problems with voxels back then, and ultimately polygonal uh, setups won, but you could do some really cool things with voxels that you just couldn't do with um, polygons back in the day. And nowadays, it's kind of come into its own as its own art style and it's very easy to work with from a um, developer's perspective basically you start with a giant cube and just start cutting away what you don't need and then you end up with something like this now as i mentioned earlier on that it's kind of like working with lego blocks well ironically actually in magic of voxel i can switch over here we're doing real-time rendering right now and i can actually switch the mode out to da -da -da -da. come on shape expand this guy out Lego blocks. We can actually have this guy render its voxel, each individual voxel as a Lego brick. And you get a really cool effect as a result. By the way, if you hear a noise in the background, I apologize. I just have to live with it for now. They're, I think, sucking all the gunk out of my sewers on the street in the neighborhood. And it's just a persistent background noise and hum that I can't do anything about. So anyways, you have just saw Magical Voxel in action. Over here, you do modeling. Over here, you do rendering. So what exactly is in this new release? Well, you get a new updated interface. We'll look at some of that in a second, but what's really nice is this one right here. Now, ironically, this part doesn't work for me. This control plus wheel does not work at all, but this control plus and minus does. And what it does is it scales up and down the user interface, which on this particular computer isn't going to be so impressive. As you can see, you can just scale in and out the UI. On my other computer with a 4K display, this is a godsend. No more running in like a high DPI compatibility mode. You just zoom it out so that it looks perfect on whatever machine you're using. So there is a definite improvement in the user interface. On top of that, the user interface in general has been just outright rewritten. So you see here, we can now collapse and expand out panels like that. So you see there's a flyout option, and now you can also resize panels to a certain degree. So there's a much more customizable user interface than what we used to have. Now let's head on back over here. Um, so that's the slideable interface, redefined interface, uh, new font rendering, uh, 
basic object list to show the scene graph, which will be improved in the future. And then we get into the render. There's now large sparse volume sample geometry SV. Uh, the rendering volume increased to 2048 by 2048 by 1024, but the total number of solid voxels is still limiting. Uh, we're with cubic voxel only. Voxel shapes. Now this one's kind of cool. They added a clay shape into the renderer. So let's head on back over here. Remember I showed you how you could turn things into Lego bricks? Well, now you can also, under shape, turn them into clay blobs. And that is your end result. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility with the art that you create using Magic of Voxels. Um, they also world scale rectangular voxels, pixelated illumination, sample PX. So with your you're setting the illumination model here. Uh, that is under sample. So we see we got global illumination. We can turn on right there, and we can also do pixelated illumination. So you get kind of more of a pixelated graphic effect. It's going to take some time for that to process, especially if I keep moving things. But you will see the end result has a slightly more pixelated look. Uh, you obviously have control over the lighting in the rendering scene. Uh, we can change things up, change the intensity, etc. But you're going to notice there's a bit of pixelation when this is done and being rendered. And unfortunately, I didn't really zoom in enough to show you that well in the results, but that is what this new addition does. Uh, ditto for global illumination and beside it, but that's not new. And I'm back over here. What else do we got? Uh, bug fixes, six bugs in orthogonal view, uh, can show the sun disk in the sky, voxel shapes and SD mode will be improved in future update. Uh, control plus drag to swap colors, control shift drag to duplicate colors, command palette sort, sort palette colors. Added XS shader in config.txt and can execute subfolder shaders. So the big ones by far and away though are the user interface tweaks. And this is a much nicer interface. If you use the previous version of Magic of Voxels, especially if you use it on a high DPI display, you will know just how big this little change is. Because this look right here, that's kind of what it's like on a high DPI monitor by default. So you can just make it so much more usable. Now again, they say control, control and scroll wheel. And I'm doing that right now and I ain't doing nothing. So that might be a bit of a bug right there, but that is a pretty substantial set of improvements and definitely kind of like the usability make life so much nicer sort of improvements. But if you have not checked out uh, Magic of Voxel as of yet, you really have to. It is just an exceptionally cool program capable of doing exceptionally cool things. And it, again, like I said, it's definitely one of the top 10 free programs out there and yeah if you haven't if you haven't used magic of voxel yet even if you're not an artist you'll find that working in voxels is just that intuitive that you can do some pretty cool stuff very easily and magic of voxel is probably the best of the bunch and once again it is completely free to use now if you're interested i will toss this link down below the downloads are available at the top and it is available in windows and mac and I guess this is one of those things that some of you want me to start mentioning up front, and I kind of always forget to, but if you're a Linux user, sorry, uh, there's there's no Linux build. But for Mac and Windows users, uh, yeah, there are. So enjoy that, uh, and you can grab the older versions available here, but realistically, it has gotten better and better and better with each re rendition, so there's not a whole lot of reasons you want to go back in time. Another interesting thing is you actually have a spec for the file format from uh, the Vox Model 3D format, so if you want to implement voxels in your game engine, uh, you can work directly with their native file format. There's also some export formats. So if we head on back over here, uh, where was that? I think it's here. Is this export? That's save project as. Is that the same thing? No. Where did export go? Come on. That's duplicate. That's new. That's save. Hmm. All right. I forget where export is. Oh, there it is. That's down here. All right, export. So you can save out to OBJ, which is pretty much the standard. It's a waveform 3D format. PLY, MC, XROS, Slab, QB, Vox, ISO, and 2D formats. So there are already a number of different formats you can bring your assets out of. And this 3D format is a static 3D model format supported by every single 3D modeler that has been ever made in the last decade. So uh, Blender, Max, Maya, Cheetah, uh, Cinema 4D, you name it, it supports object format. So you can get your model out of here in 3D format in usable form for just about any kind Kind of program you want and as you saw earlier there is a full renderer built in here as well with some uh, pretty nice effects and of course including the new ability to render as clay whereas additionally you've also got cylinders spheres uh, marching cubes 
standard cubes, which is your normal voxel, and my personal favorite, once again, Lego bricks. So that is Magic of Voxel. If you've not checked it out, honestly, just go drop everything, go ahead and do it. it it's an awesome program. And let me know if you'd like to see that top 10 list. I, I kind of find top 10 lists a little clickbaity, but then again, I like clicks. So is it a good bait for you? Let me know. Would you like me to focus on my top 10 favorite free game dev tools? If so, yeah, let me know in comments down below. Also, give me some suggestions. I appreciate them. There's a lot of times I find programs I never heard about because of your comments. So, have you used Magic of Voxel? Are you going to use Magic of Voxel? If you are a Magic of Voxel, what do you think of the improved... Okay, I'm showing my bias there, but uh, the new user interface. Do you think it's an improvement like I do, or do you like the old way? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.